first of all, we are 42 years of independence. Zimbabwe is less than us. China and Taiwan. China is the People's Republic of China. Taiwan is the Republic of China, which broke away from China. They have a very high technology in the world today. Their technology is much higher than even in the West. And if we don't hate Chinese per se, it is the weak government policy. We don't need Chinese manpower. What we need is their technology. If we utilize the Chinese technology, both from Taiwan or from, uh, from uh, Peking, Zambia would develop in all fields. But if we are allowing 80,000 China men, they are not adding value to Zambia. Mind you, China may be a big country, but they are more, they are more than 3 billion. So there is a shortage of land. And we have to be careful. We might think that we have got very big land. We might be comfortable because they give you one million dollars you put in you put in a bank abroad. But what about you, Chalaka Fish? You are much younger than me. What about your children? What about everybody who is there? What we need for the way we get from the West, the Chinese, the Indians, the Japanese, South Koreans, the Taiwan, let's tap technology. And when we tap technology, we have people who can implement that technology. Today, Zambia, we are not manufacturing anything. We are a dumping ground. You have a company called Saro, Saro Agri Industries, the opposite Soweto. They can't do anything because there are so many cheap dumped things in here in, in, in Zambia. We have Ramasat. They can't do anything because there are so many dumped. We have Lamis. This is a country now where you are even importing cooking oil when you have rope. You have rope across the road there, but you, you are finding cooking oil. They are exporting groundnuts. They are exporting tobacco. We have even stopped manufacturing tobacco at BAT, you know, at, at Elmersdale there. We are, importing, we are importing cigarettes from Kenya. Now, why is, are we importing cigarettes from Kenya? Because the taxes and the access to foreign exchange in Zambia is much easier. Today, Zambia must be much richer than any other African continent because we have a smaller population. We have immense minerals under our ground. But today we export copper. Copper has reached the highest peak. But the money does not come to Zambia. How rich are we? We have emeralds. Money does not come to Zambia. We have tomarine. Money does not come to Zambia. We have lots of people export. They use our sweat. And when they export, we get nothing out of that. Now that is, somebody must look at that and think seriously. So the Chinese are very welcome, both from the People's Republic of China and from, from the Republic of China, Taiwan. We need their technology because the Taiwan and in Malawi, if you go and look at the amount of technology which they have put there, you can't compare them to the People's Republic of China here in Zambia. They have done commendable job. They did Tuta Road. They did Mong Road. They did Tazara, but that, those are high-profile projects which they should come and let the Zambians utilize them, but not human beings. 80,000 Chinese, what are they doing? If you take 80,000 Chinese and one Chinaman takes one dollar every month, that's $80,000 which is going out of Zambia every month. Some people are saying you're a great politician, but sometimes you can't apply political ideals into economic reality. Well, the whole point is, I have done that in all my humble life. In all my humble life, I changed Lusaka, Lusaka City Council. In, under very difficult condition, under very difficult political condition, under UNIP. I transformed the Minister of Health. I transformed the Minister of Labor. I transformed the Minister of Local Government. Now, if you are transforming those... I believe not in being pompous. I believe in utilizing the manpower which is available. You know, the boys who are jumping in the streets, whom we are calling street vendors, those are big investors. They are far much more intelligent than we politicians. Because if they survive seven days a week, they survive 30 days a month, they survive 365 days, what they have refused is to steal because they don't want to go to prison. But they are surviving. They are jumping streets, selling things. How do, where do they buy those things? Where do they get capital? They don't even have banks. We have enormous intelligence. The women who are mining stones, you know the women who are breaking stones, they are very intelligent women. Our mothers 
who are squatting because some people they bring by bringing universal church satanic church they say that's investment that's not investment the investment is where you're going to create employment where you're going to reduce the cost of living i give you a simple example mr chelakatush and your colleague who is sitting here malawi has no minerals they have only agriculture tobacco and cotton the exchange rate in Malawi is 140 kwacha, 140 kwacha to a dollar. Zambia's old minerals and our exchange rate, the highest in Africa, 4,000 kwacha. In Tanzania, they have no minerals. The exchange rate is 128 shillings to a dollar. There must something has gone wrong somewhere, somehow. Because if we are relying on corruption, there is casualization in Zambia. There is no casualization in Zimbabwe. There is no casualization in Tanzania. Today you have pollution. This government has not said anything because the big, the owners of the mines went to meet the president when he was in hospital and that matters died naturally like that. We'll never get to it. We had cholera in Kaputa. The chief ran away. The chief runs away so that when he goes back, they'll tell him that and that has died. How can we go on like that? We still have 42 years after it of independence. From Nchelenge, go all the way to Chienge. Come to Kaputa, come to Nsama, come to Mprokoso, come to Kasama, Dust Road. You cannot link Kawamba to Mprokoso. You cannot link Mpika to Chipata. You cannot impik, link Mpika to Lundazi. You, you have to come from Monze, from Monze, come to Lusaka to go to Siavonga, when it's only 160 kilometers. Those are things we are supposed to address. Even the president where he claims to come from, at Landry's Corner. People have to come to Lusaka to go to Mumbwa, which is less than 80 kilometers. Now, those are things which we have seriously to look at, not rhetoric. President Sata, the, the, the African Development Bank has approved 123 billion kwacha for budget support to Zambia's poverty reduction programs under the Fifth National Development Plan. And, and, and we haven't heard you comment but the whole point about is, it. Is it, it the heard first is, time, is it the first time? With, with this money is coming, this money is going to be spent in seminars, this money is going to be spent in workshops, this money is going to be spent buying luxury vehicles for the people who are supposed to implement. Look at AIDS. First look at AIDS. If you look at AIDS, the people who are dying from AIDS die in agony. The people who are, who are waxing in fat are the people who are supposed to sensitize AIDS. The people who are supposed to administer AIDS. You have more NGOs dealing with AIDS. The money which is going to NGOs, the money which is going to workshops, the money which is going to seminars, that money can help the people who are dying from AIDS. Today, people are not supposed to die from AIDS, but do, we, do they have any attention from the government? So even if it's 123 billion, whatever it is, the budget support, do, 42 years of independence, we don't need budget support funds. We have enough money within ourselves where we can develop. Because, yes, you are saying 123 billion. What are the conditions? How many foreigners are they going to bring to come and administer 123 billion? Because before the man arrives here, it's the human beings who are going to arrive here who will be staying in hotels, who will be staying in posh hotels. And the people who are, those children who are jumping the streets, begging a hundred kwacha, they have parents. The parents have not been paid. Today, Comrade Chelakatwish, today, people are retiring from the army, from the police, prison service, intelligence, ZNS, Zambia Air Force. It people are coming to Lusaka without their terminal benefits. They have worked for the money. They are spending more money on fighting for their terminal benefits. Where is the sanity? We were, we, we were, hide, we were jumping like grasshoppers. Yes, we have attained the hippie. We have attained the hippie. Because we overpaid the international community their money. But we still have local suppliers. A poor woman who supplied beans to Minister of Education a poor man who supplied beans to prisons, to police, to the army, ZNS, Air Force, who have not been paid the money. Today, the Zambian subcontractor on the mines, he doesn't get paid. They paid people from South Africa. And today, you bring a grade 7, grade 8 Indian to say he's an engineer at KCM. What does he know about Zambia? You bring grade 12, 
He says an accountant at KCM and in Waisha. What do they know about Zambia? And yet we have seekers here producing refined accountants. We have other qualified accountants here. The only field where we have survived is the legal field because the Law Association of Zambia, they have said anybody to come and practice in Zambia, he must be called to the Zambian bar. Now those are the difficulties. And here you are today, even that, because of the weak constitution, it can be circumvented by this government because this country is run by like a personal tirum or a contemba. How do you bring a foreign court in Zambia? How do you bring a foreign court in Zambia when that court which is coming to Zambia cannot even sit next door in Ireland?